This is a python that just survived the flood and is now just trying to climb higher. And these are toads that sit on the python and cling to it so tightly that it can't throw them off. The casual observer might think they too are escaping the flood, but in fact, they have something else in mind. Back in 2018, Western Australia was hit by a massive storm that resulted in a fascinating and somewhat eerie scene. People were taken aback, to say the least, when they spotted 10 cane toads clinging onto a python that measured about 11 feet in length. It all began when the lake close to the toads' habitat overflowed, causing them all to emerge from their burrows. People who saw it said there were thousands of toads, and among them, they spotted a python. This python was zooming through the grass, frantically trying to climb higher while carrying the cane toads on its back. A witness took a picture of that animal train. The photo ended up on the internet and quickly went viral. And then an expert emerged to explain what's actually happening in the picture. While it may seem like the toads had found a clever way to get to a dry area, that's probably not what they were doing at all. In fact, the toads were trying to mate with a snake. Bonjour. Look at this male toad, eagerly attaching himself to a female and holding on tightly. You see, males of this species are always ready to give the ladies the attention they deserve, simply because there aren't as many females around. When males manage to find a potential mate, they hold on to her as hard as they can while females take them to their desired mating spot. But in their desire to reproduce, cane toads can sometimes, shall we say, get too carried away? They've been known to try to mate with everything in their path. Male toads, human arms and legs, other species, and even inanimate objects. Here's an image shared by a toad expert on her social media a cane toad mating with a rotting mango. And here's what happened at the same spot minutes later, and we refuse to make any comments on that. This toad chose a shoe as its mate. It may look like the toad is riding the fish here, but actually, well, you get the idea. What about that poor python? Since the male cane toad has a pretty strong grip, there wasn't much the snake could do but wait for those stowaway passengers to get off. It could bite one of the toads, but when it comes to this particular species, that's not a good idea. The glands on the shoulders of cane toads are filled with toxins that can be dangerous even to snakes. In other words, the python was completely helpless. But it's not just cane toads that have been observed to act this way. Unsuccessful attempts to mate are known as misdirected amplexus. Yes, this is common enough phenomenon to deserve a name. Confused frogs and toads are found on every continent except for spots where they don't live at all. Looks like these mistakes happen mostly with fish, and the fish themselves probably don't appreciate such tight embrace. Researchers found about 400 frogs clinging to objects they almost certainly could never fertilize. Their dead kin, incompatible species, frog embryos still inside the eggs, coconuts, mangoes, and apples, geckos, turtles, fish, and slugs. Balls, rulers, and plastic cups? Some didn't even shun cow manure. Look, this toad's making a sound to attract mates. She as a female doesn't have to go anywhere, and the males know exactly which way they need to go. And this toad doesn't make those sounds, so it has to launch a whole search expedition to find a mate. Not surprisingly, along the way, the animal can get a little confused. Of course, it all depends on the species. Some toads, for example, make mating noises, others use chemical cues, and among them, there are almost no males who make mistakes. It doesn't work like that when it comes to amphibians that use search and find strategy. These animals are more likely to face competition when there are many males and relatively few females. Plus, finding a mate is difficult. It requires a lot of energy and time. And then I started wondering, how come amphibians can mate with something that's not intended for mating? I mean, this behavior doesn't result in offspring, and therefore should not be encouraged by natural selection. So why did nature allow such mistakes to become so common? Well, it seems like the reason is a lack of shyness. Toads that have to constantly leap around looking for a mate might as well not find one at all. That's why males stick to the mate first, ask questions later rule. It's much better to be wrong than to be indecisive and end up having no offspring. This is what it looks like but I think you already got the point. By indiscriminately mating with everything they come across, the males sooner or later stumble into a female. 
Nevertheless, this strategy has its downsides. When the male spends too much time mating with unsuitable objects, he's left without offspring. Each mistake means wasted time that could have been spent looking for a more suitable mate. Some males cling to a female for weeks, even months, not eating anything during that period. This has dire consequences and is hardly worth the effort if in the end there isn't any offspring. More importantly, nothing can be done about this behavior. Males that accidentally got grabbed by other males will at least let out a protesting cry to demand letting them go. Dead toads and apples, however, can't make any sounds, so the male has no idea he's made a mistake. Plus, being outside of water or a burrow for long makes the males more vulnerable to predators and disease. In short, there are a lot of downsides to this strategy, but since amphibians keep trying to mate with something they're not supposed to and still haven't gone extinct, then it must be okay. Well, some scientists believe that this behavior is getting more common because humans are changing the planet. As usual, it's all our fault. Frogs can only reproduce during the rainy season, and there are fewer and fewer of them, so there's not enough time to reproduce. However, certain females intentionally make a choice that may seem like a mistake when it comes to mating. Their goal is to ensure the highest possible quality of their offspring. Female plain spadefoot toads carefully select the best male among their surroundings, even if that male happens to be a different species. This behavior is a conscious and strategic decision on their part. Here's what happens. Tadpoles grow in ponds, but if there isn't enough rain, the ponds will dry out before the tadpoles are fully developed, resulting in their deaths. So if there isn't enough water in the ponds, the females choose a male of a different species, one that produces offspring that develops faster. That means the tadpoles will have enough time to grow before the water dries up. Of course, there are problems here too. Male hybrids resulting from such reproduction are sterile. But the evolutionary logic says that in an unfavorable season, sterile offspring is better than no offspring at all. Moreover, the females will be able to breed anyway. Actually, as weird as it may sound, interspecies mating is not something unusual. Some scientists estimate that about 10% of animals intermingle without any help from humans, simply because that happens sometimes. But the vast majority of these cases involve animals that are very similar in genetic makeup and appearance, otherwise they simply can't have hybrid offspring. However, the animals we'll talk about next are not alike at all. This video shows Japanese macaques climbing on top of deer, but not because they want to escape danger. Yup, it's the same story as with the toads and the python. A male monkey in Japan was filmed trying to mate with a female deer, and that's a very, very rare occurrence. She waited in the dragon's keep, in the highest room of the tallest tower. Japanese macaques, yes, the ones people love to film in hot springs, and seek a deer regularly encounter each other on Yakushima Island. Living close to each other is beneficial to both species from a practical standpoint. The deer know that if they stick close to the macaques, they can eat whatever fruit the macaques drop off a branch. Deer have also been seen eating macaque feces, and macaques in turn have been observed grooming deer. Here, for example, you can see a monkey picking parasites out of a deer's hide for a light snack. So why would a relationship like this have evolved into this? There are several theories. The first is that it happened by accident. Yeah, because it's really easy to mistake a deer for another macaque. They're so much alike, after all. The second theory says that the male macaque used the female deer to satisfy his needs, but experts quickly dismissed it because macaques are social animals, they should have enough partners without deer. Finally, the third theory, the most plausible one, this male has a high rank in macaque society, so he's surrounded by the attention of females, and this is a male with low social status. And he's not even allowed to approach females. He spends a lot of time alone. The most reasonable explanation is that the macaque in the video is a so-called peripheral male. He has a low position in macaque hierarchy, which usually doesn't give him the right to mate. Since they have no contact with females, these peripheral males might have developed unconventional relationships with the deer. Scientists really want to find out more about such relationships, but so far, they don't have a single opportunity. This phenomenon is too rare. One of the questions that occupy the minds of scientists is whether the Sika deer was a willing participant in all this. In one video, the female deer clearly rejects the macaque's advances, while another shows the deer seemingly confused by the actions of her unexpected partner. 
It's also known that both species love to play. For example, here a baby Japanese macaque plays with a snowball, so it's possible that the deer thinks it's just a game. Anyway, macaques don't act aggressively or try to coerce the deer, so in general, it looks like deer just aren't bothered by that. What about other species? This seal is no doubt that penguins are food. This one, on the other hand, seems confused. There has been a very strange scene on a remote Marian island. An Arctic fur seals usually feed on krill, fish, squid, and the occasional bird, including penguins. But one young adult male wouldn't eat a king penguin. He tried to mate with it. A little later, researchers recorded three more similar cases. In the first case, one could think that the male was inexperienced and chose the closest creature to the female he could find. Could be. It happens all the time with cane toads. The fact that this has happened several times suggests that such behavior is spreading in the region. It could be due to the same reason observed in macaques, lack of females. Dominant males tend to leave all the females for themselves, creating harems and leaving other males with nothing. Now let's talk about sea snakes. An Australian scuba diver noticed strange behavior in these sea snakes that came into contact with him. It was indeed strange. The snakes coiled around his fins, licked the water nearby, and even sometimes chased the scuba diver. For a long time, he could not understand what was going on until it turned out he was diving during the mating season. The male snakes thought he was a potential mate. And this is not speculation, but the results of an actual scientific study conducted on the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists analyzed 158 such interactions with olive sea snakes and found they were most common during the breeding season. This photo clearly shows the snake rubbing against the diver's legs. And according to the expert, males just can't tell the difference between human legs and a potential mate. The result is quite comical. Males coil around females during courtship, probably to stay as close to them as possible when it comes to mating. That's why they coil around scuba divers' legs. The female, on the other hand, swims away from the male as fast as she can, and not because she wants to get away. No, in the snake world, this is called courtship. So the diver who tried to swim away from the snakes started to look even more like a potential mate. Perhaps at this point, you, like me, will exclaim, well, how can you mistake a leg for a snake? The thing is, sea snakes struggle with recognizing shapes beneath the water's surface. Seeing through water is actually more challenging than seeing through air, especially when the water is choppy or muddy. Sea snakes evolved from land snakes quite recently, so they don't have a proper visual system for such conditions. They rely mostly on their sense of smell. This sea snake sticks out its tongue to collect chemicals from the water, which are then analyzed by a special organ inside its body, and this is how the snake understands who's in front of it. That's why tongue flicking is so often observed when snakes are communicating with divers. A sea snake has to get very close to an object to determine what it actually is. Does it mean the water around scuba divers tastes the same as it does around females? Despite the potential danger posed by olive sea snakes to humans, Researchers don't think that swimming with these reptiles during their mating season poses any risk for people. Apparently, it's not typical for this species to bite their potential mates. But leaving legs and snakes aside, could some new, completely different species result from the mingling of different species? In terms of genetics, a hybrid animal is a result of interbreeding between divergent lineages, and the main obstacle to that is usually the inherent differences in the species. They may breed at different times of the year, or they may have a different behavior that makes mating less likely. Well, in theory, certain species might have the capability to produce offspring, but it's highly unlikely to occur because their mating preferences and timing just don't align. However, in captivity or in the lab, these kinds of natural barriers disappear. One of the most famous results of hybridization in captivity is the so-called liger, a cross between a male lion and a female tiger. In nature, however, there's no way such an animal could come to be. This is what the lion's habitat looks like, and this is where tigers live. They don't ever cross paths. And even if by some miracle lions and tigers were to cross in the wild, no new species would come out of it. Only female hybrids are capable of reproduction, while male hybrids are sterile from birth. 
This rule applies to almost all hybrids – I've already mentioned toads – which purposely mate with other species so that their tadpoles will develop faster. In addition, hybrids are often prone to disease. For example, ligers grow very fast and have heart issues because of it. But while hybrids seem unusual, it's likely that many of them are quite common. Some experts argue that hybridization is well documented in birds, where a whopping 10% of the more than 10,000 known bird species are known to hybridize. Most folks don't really pay much attention to this. To them, it's just one bird mating with another bird to create another weird-looking bird. In the end, what do we get? It'll take an extremely long time before we can witness the emergence of a new species resulting from the intermingling of existing ones. Moreover, multiple factors must align perfectly for this to happen. The two species must be closely related so that the offspring isn't sterile. For example, polar bears cross very well with grizzly bears. And it happens even in the wild, and hybrids even produce offspring, all because these bears are related. So no lion eagles, sparrow monkeys, or what other horrible creatures the internet's come up with. None of that'll ever happen. In addition, encounters between the two species must occur frequently or even constantly. And finally, let's not forget about natural selection. A hybrid must be viable and have better qualities for survival than a non-hybrid, because otherwise there's simply no point in all this, and evolution will not even allow a new species to emerge. At least until the rules of the game change. See you later.